All right, let's do this. Let's get this going. Welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. I am your host, Fusion Phil, over here at JIT CAD Cam. Awesome to see you guys already in chat. John, great to see that you're here. Also, Travis as well. Travis, I'm pretty sure you work second shift, it seems like, as much as you're here. I'm going to give this a few seconds. Make sure you guys can hear me all right. It seems that every week we have some type of problem that happens. So with that, go ahead, let me know that you guys can hear me okay, you can see me okay as of right now, and we'll go ahead and kick this off. Loud and clear, awesome. Welcome back, Chuck Bogdan, awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's do this, let's get into this. This week, we're gonna talk about setup sheets, the value of a setup sheet and how that can affect your workflow in different ways that you can actually improvise and use these for other things outside of just being nothing more than a setup sheet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through a lot of different ways to create a setup sheet. Now for you and your workflow, obviously this is gonna make a big difference on what works best for you guys. So the very first way, very traditionally guys, the part doesn't matter, milling, turning, as you're gonna see, it's still gonna be the same thing. So I'm gonna take my first setup here and I'm going to right click and as most of you may or may not know, there's an option for setup sheet right here. Now you can also access a setup sheet directly from the toolbar up top. Again, action setup sheet. As you can see, this actually populated over on my other screen, but this at the lowest level is how you generate a setup sheet, right? The nice thing about these setup sheets is things like your stock size, a part location, your WCS location, all of this stuff is coming through automatically, as well as a screen capture of that part in its orientation. Now I'm gonna show you guys some stuff about this and you're gonna see why this is so valuable. But you actually have everything from a cycle time. Now we do have an estimated cycle time, as you can see. Again, there's gonna be a few more settings you guys will see when we do this a different way that can help adjust those numbers accordingly. But again, your tools, length of tools, what operation, what tool is going where. Now, if you had your actual tools set up with links, again, being the fact that this is nothing more than a PDF document, we could go out and see that tool directly on the actual website. But again, a setup sheet is nothing more than telling you what is it that you're running, you know, what is your work offset and what tools you're using, right? Now, this is the traditional way to create a setup sheet. Now, I'm gonna show you another way to approach a setup sheet. We're gonna dive into the NC format, or uh, is it NC format? I can't, I always forget the two. So let's go ahead and do a post process. And yes, so what we have is called create NC program, right? So what a create NC program for some of you that do and do not know is it actually creates over here in your window, a point of reference for you to come back to. Now, what's nice about that is if I wanted to actually label this setup one, since we are posting out setup one, I do need to give this a post processor to work with. So we can go ahead and post that out as if we were gonna go run it on the machine. Again, we have our G code to run it. And as you're seeing now, we have our NC program, right? So not NC format, I was wrong there. NC program was the correct terminology. Sorry, I'm pulling you guys back up on chat to make sure nobody's asking questions. But from here, if you guys didn't know this, this is really neat. So we could actually go directly to this and post at any time that we wanted. So if we wanted to repeat that functionality, I'm gonna go in again, you can right click, you can go up and say, create NC program. A pro tip for some of you guys out there that I'm trying to break the old habit is using the S key for shortcuts. Again, same thing, post process. We could actually say NC, create NC and pin this to our toolbar. Again, what that allows you to do is to automatically create fast reference points for your NC program, as well as your setup sheets, as you guys will see here. So what I'm gonna do this time now is I'm gonna right click and go to setup sheet, but I'm right clicking on my NC program. And what this is gonna do is instead of pushing this back into my computer, as you saw before, where I saved it local to my desktop, we're gonna save it out to our actual Fusion 360 data file or our, our cloud storage. Again, that idea that maybe your guys on the floor have an access 
Diffusion 360, they can post their own G-code. They can now actually reference that setup sheet in real time. Now, this is the first time around where you guys are going to see some customization that you can do here. Same information, just displayed a little differently. Again, you can minimize, maximize. If you want quick references here, you can also go through and narrow this down to maybe you only want the tools. As you're seeing, no operations, just tools for my tool setup. Again, we could go through and we could say, you know, images. No, we don't want the images. Again, we're going to get into this more later on in the year as updates happen to the setup sheets. But again, this is another way for you to create a setup sheet. Also modify the information that you're seeing very simply. And as I showed you here is it's now been posted out and put on our Fusion Team Hub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up on another page. And while that is going on, I'm going to go ahead and populate the third way that you can create a setup sheet. Now, I do see another guy come in here. Hybrid Machining, great to see you out there. I appreciate it. So what I'm going to do now is a completely different way that I think a lot of you didn't know existed inside of Fusion. And that way is, is that you can actually go to post process. And then from post process, there is post specifically for setup sheets. Now, why is this so valuable? Well, this is all post processors that you can edit and you can modify to create those setup sheets exactly how you like. For example, I'm going to say setup sheet for Excel, right? So again, Excel 2007, Excel doesn't really matter on my end. We're going to go ahead and throw these somewhere where I could delete them later as always. And now what you can see is when I was kind of talking about the ability to give this some different input information to get your cycle times much more accurate, that's what you're seeing is I can actually program in a rapid feed rate. So if my machine is actually rapiding at 2,500 RPMs, the amount of time that it takes to do a tool change, I can also edit this post. And I'm going to go ahead and click edit just so we can get this popped up to come back to in a moment. But as you're going to see is if I post this out again, I'll get the warning because this isn't a non-standard post inside of Fusion. And what you're seeing now in real time is it's asking me, do I want to open this up in a certain software? Again, we said Excel. It's trying to push things over to Excel. And now you guys get the lovely view of uh, me not having Excel in this case. But again, I'm getting all of this information in real time so that I can, again, break this down by operations. If you wanted to do a CSV file, for example, you could upload that CSV file into your CRM, your job management software, whatever it is. But it still comes back to the same. All of these data fields are completely editable and completely adjustable, even this template here for Excel, for example. And what I'm gonna show you is how to access that so that you guys can edit it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to post-process. Again, I have my setup sheets. These have all been saved to my local area. So I do need to know where that location is for me to access. Again, as you're seeing me, I'm accessing either things based on my desktop, we can pin to that location to get there faster. As you see, we have our CPS files and things of that nature. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab this link here real quick. And instead of trying to import here, I'm actually gonna run back over to my file folders of my computer, post that, or not post that, but paste that in. And as you can see, you now have your Microsoft Excel template sheet. Again, that Excel CPS file is pulling from that Excel template. So again, if you wanted to edit the format here, it's showing you, let me get these windows closed out. We're really bootstrapped over here at CAD Cam. So as you can see, it's giving you your variables of what is gonna go where and how it's gonna be arranged. Again, this is the template that you can edit to make this fit any way that you guys feel necessary. You can also use the Autodesk Dumper at the end of the day. If you aren't familiar with the Autodesk Dumper, this will give you all of the properties that you can pull from in order to plug into those fields, right? So again, as we can go to all of our Autodesk's posts, and as you're gonna see, there's the Dumper post processor. This would post out a list of all of your variables. Again, just copying this over just to get you guys a point of reference. So now that you have that information and you have the ability to edit, again, this is gonna be edited the exact same way as you guys see when you edit a post processor anyway. 
We can change, you know, defaults in here. We can go through, we can add some of those variables. We can remove those variables to make this as customized as possible. Now that this has been pulled up on my other screen and we can look at it in Team Viewer, I'm gonna show you a few more tricks because I think you guys are starting to recognize that every bit of data on these sheets is all the same, right? We're looking at the same data. It may look a little different on these sheets, Again, Team Viewer allows me to do a lot of neat things. Again, download this, print this off if you want a hard copy. But the one thing I really like, and I get this question every so often is, hey, we're gonna run a couple thousand of these parts. I wanna know how long the tool path or the tool is engaged in my part. And well, the cool thing is, this is gonna show you, right? So we can go in and we could look at what's called cutting distance. This is the distance or the amount of length in our tool path that our tool is engaging on that part. So if you wanted to set a wear percentage at your controller or switch to a new tool at a certain amount or a certain number of parts for some of you bar feeding, you could actually go in and do that math, of course, because now you're getting exactly that, right? The distance until that tool is going to wear divided or actually the number of parts times the distance wear, so forth and so on. I did see one of my monitors just turned off here. Give me a sec, guys. I hope this is being helpful. I do want to point out to a lot of you out there, we have the ability with these files to customize these over at JIT CAD CAM. So if there's something very particular you're looking for, a very certain way that you want to see your data, or is there a certain data that you cannot see, you guys are more than welcome to reach out to us here, and we're happy to get this set up to help make your guys' job much more streamlined and much more easy. As always, guys, I know we kind of went quick here. How long have we been going? We've been in this for about 10 minutes. So I like to keep these short and sweet. I love that all of you guys out there are liking, subscribing. I think we're up over 1,840 subscribers now. It's crazy. I appreciate it. If you feel like giving more, obviously, you can buy your Fusion 360 through us over here. It's 30% off right now. You could also do things like buy me a beer using the link down below, but feel free to send us support tickets also using the email down below, and we'll be happy to jump on these things as best we can. So it's not what you know, it's who you know, and you guys know Phil over here at JitCadCam. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.